This is Deborah Atkinson. Welcome to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and challenges so you can have more ease and less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and habits that help you flip 50 for a life and energy you love in the second half. My guest today is going to wow you. Dr. Sharon Melnick is a leading authority on women's confidence. Can we all use a little more of that? Resilience and influence, and so they can live up to their potential. Her practical tools are informed by 10 years of research at Harvard Medical School and field tested by over 20,000 training participants. An internationally sought after speaker, her keynote presentations receive 100% repeat invites and create a buzz at marquee business and leadership conferences. She's even presented at the White House. Over 25 of the Fortune 500 companies have used her trainings on success under stress and confident influential leadership to create cultures where women become successful leaders and advance to the level of their talent. And you can tell already, I'm sure, how much help she's going to be to us today. She's the best-selling author of Success Under Stress, Powerful Tools for Staying Calm, Confident, and Productive When the Pressure's On, and her new book, Confidence When It Counts, Rise Above Self-Criticism and Bias for Next Level Opportunities for Women. Her advice has been featured on Forbes.com, Fox News, NYC, her New York Times blog, Huffington Post, CBS, and many more. She's CEO of Horizon Point Incorporated. So I've got a question for you. If you're listening already, have you joined a group, done a program, worked with a coach, got great results, had momentum? had lost the weight, got the energy, improved the sleep, your skin looked great, and then, bam, you're suddenly back three squares. You're self-sabotaging when everything is going well. Well, that's what we're talking about today. Sharon, thanks so much for being here. Uh, It's such a privilege, uh, Deborah, and um, I need you uh, as well as all the listeners. So I'm going to be listening to all your podcasts, and I'm I'm going to be trying to listen to my own advice here today. Well, I can vouch for that, and here's why: not because I can see you, because audience, you all know this is totally audio, and Sharon's in New York, and I'm in Boulder. However, and she does look amazing. But she is so busy. We have scheduled and postponed and scheduled, and it was right down to the wire. So she's got the same problem all of us do. Time. Limited time. But let's talk about, first of all, you know, from all of your insight, all of your work with women, I'm sure this comes up in multiple places and not just in fitness, health, wellness, and self-care, but really let's define this. What is self-sabotage? Well, you know, um, I actually wouldn't say it that way. So I think that this is sort of like a shorthand that we use, right? Like, oh, you're sabotaging yourself. Mm -hmm. But the way that I think about it is the the things that we do that uh, appear as self-sabotage, I think are really... Uh, adaptive strategies or strategies that are meant to try to help you to uh, kind of be more confident, but they backfire. And let me maybe say a little bit more about what I mean by that, which is that I think, you know, we're all trying to get to this place where we feel confident and secure. We, we feel successful. We're, you know, fully expressed in our lives, but at any given moment uh, in our lives, Many of us uh, have these moments where, uh, you know, we doubt ourselves or we criticize ourselves or, you know, we compare ourselves, we judge ourselves and uh, all these kinds of things. And uh, even if you have objective accomplishments, even if people have told you, you know, that you look great or whatever, if this is the way that you feel about yourself, then you can't have, you know, that rock solid feeling of confidence and that you're living up to your potential. But we're all motivated to get there. So we're going to do certain behavior patterns. And it is these behavior patterns that are meant, right, to try to get us to uh, that place uh, of achievement and potential. But the way that we go about doing it kind of backfires. So can I give you some examples of these patterns? I love that. Please. Um, 
So the way that I think about it, especially when it comes to this confidence uh, issue, is that, you know, confidence is not one size fits all, right? That actually um, there's four different patterns that I've uh, identified. And maybe let me go through them really quick and uh, let's see if any of you kind of recognize yourself in these. And not that you do these patterns sort of, you know, every moment of every day, but I'm talking about in the moments when it counts, right? Uh, So the first pattern would be uh, where you put your time and energy and attention into getting other people to think well of you so that they will validate you, appreciate you, reassure you. So this is where, you know, you might say yes to everyone else and then not uh, be able to fulfill on what you need for your work or get to your exercise regimen, right? Where you might just really throw yourself into uh, over preparing and then not have the time uh, or the bandwidth. And it's all in the hopes that people will think that you're really smart or, you know, you, you're sort of, um, uh, you know, are in angst about making decisions and ask everybody else for their opinion before you'll take some action of something that's good for you because you don't quite trust yourself, right? Or just these uh, kinds of things you really are, are looking kind of too much about uh, how people are valuing you or not. So that's the so, first pattern where you sort of seeking approval from other people in order to feel good in yourself. I'm going to call that one the, the Ruth Okay, I'm from a small town and my mama's name is Ruth. <laughs> it was always okay. like, well, what will people think? <laughs> yeah, there you go. So it's, uh, it's embedded in the culture Love in your you head. Mom. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, got it. So, um, so that's where, you know, a lot of your time and attention is sort of going to other people and you're not really um, validating yourself or making, dec- you know, trusting yourself. The second pattern would be, uh, where it's just the opposite, actually. And so this is where you're not trying to get approval from other people. You're actually trying to prevent disapproval from other people. So this is where like, okay, come on, how many guilty hands are going to raise? Like you had something really valuable to say, or, you know, sp- uh, or like a truth for you to speak up, but you, but you didn't speak up right? Mm. Because you were concerned about what the other person would say or whether other people would think your ideas or, you you know, uh, would shoot them down or, you know, sort of who am I to put myself out there, you know, in that bigger way, right? Or want more for myself or, you know, these kinds of things or, or knowing the actions that you should take for your life, but putting them off um, because, you know, you're, you're just um, wanting to make sure that you, you don't get criticized or that nobody, um, you know, kind of thinks that you're being too big for your britches or, you know, just staying in your comfort zone, essentially. And uh, because you know that you can control, you know, you can get compliments there and uh, you don't want to do anything to rock the boat or potentially lose uh, respect of people by really going for something bigger. That's wow. the pattern, right? Sort of preventing that disapproval. Yeah. Boy, I hear that one. You know, it makes me think back to several different, not just one, but several different, you know, Monday morning staff meetings. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. And um, so if you ever um, have a chance to uh, hear hear me give a, a kind of a signature talk or, or read the opening chapter of my book, I'm completely giving away state secrets here. So forgive me. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. But that's what I did when I was uh, many years ago when I was invited to speak at the White House. And essentially, I said no. Why? Because I was, you know, I was afraid that they would think I wasn't smart enough. So I wasn't going to give them the opportunity. Thank you very much to judge me in that way. Right. I just denied them that opportunity. Wow. So that's that second pattern, right, where you're sort of protecting yourself from being yeah. uh, Rejected. The third pattern is uh, more of a perfectionist pattern where, you know, you have this inner ideal and you have to prove yourself to live up to it. Um, and you have to not disappoint anybody else's expectations and you have to control how things go and make sure nothing goes sideways in situations. Cause in your mind, you'll be the one to be blamed and it will all be your fault. And so you kind of, you take that mantle on, right? And so you live in a way where it's constantly focusing on the gap and needing to overwork and push yourself and it's never good enough and you're never good enough and neither is the people around you, right? And they kind of let you know that they feel that way from you. And um, so 
What I want you to kind of notice uh, for any of you listening, if you if you resonate in any key moments uh, in your life with these patterns, I think the idea is is that notice where your where your time and energy is going to. It's it's not towards your life or living up to your potential. It's really into managing other people's other people's perceptions, right? And kind of getting that it's really kind of outsourcing, if you will, your uh, way of thinking about yourself. And so when we say self-sabotage, that's sort of what it looks like on the outside. But really, these are uh, were initially adaptive ways because, you know, when we grow up, we are it's normal to come to see yourself through the eyes of other people. And this is normal. And that's how we grow up. So, you know, you're, you're set up to kind of get teachers and parents and friends and stuff to think well of you. And it's normal uh, to be hardwired to prevent, you know, emotional or physical harm by other people criticizing you or hurting you or abandoning you. Like that's all, you know, in our hardwiring. But the, I think the idea is kind of like what got you here isn't going to get you there, you know, mm. and that you really need to source that confidence uh, from within. You really need to get it from meaningful connections, from the rewards of your contribution. And, you know, what we call self-sabotage is really ways where you might be putting your attention on other people to try to get their love. And it's sort of like an indirect way of of getting uh, what you want. And really the, the sort of the direct way, the fast way, the way that's more within your control is like, don't try to get love, just be love. You know, don't try to get love, just feel lovable because that you can control 24 seven, right? That you can always uh, experience anytime you want. Wow, Wow, I've got got it. it. I want to go go back back just to those those three different different kind of of ways ways that, you know, us getting in our own way shows up or being you know, trying to have that adaptive strategy and where it backfires for us. Am I right in suspecting that we may each have one of those that's more prominent, but that we probably have a little bit of all of them, either that or I'm a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been all three of those strategies extensively just for the purpose that I could talk about them with you. Um, but for Taking most, one for the team. I like right, that. Exactly. For the team. Exactly. You know, most people, um, it's really across the board. Some people really identify with one of those patterns. Some of them have a little bit of, uh, of all three. And again, I guess, you know, since the name of my second book is Confidence When It Counts, what I do want you to appreciate is that you know, for many of you, you, you might have many moments during your day, especially like in, when you're in a role, like a work role, sometimes you can feel more confident because there's like specific things that you're supposed to do and you feel kind of competent at that. But what you want to know is that when it comes to your life uh, and, and like, you know, career success or living up to your potential, which is a greater determinant of your career and life success? Is it your competence or your confidence? Mm. It's your confidence. So it's not really? the knowledge that you have or the role that you could play. It's how you use that knowledge that really determines whether you're going to have the life that you want. It's not whether you have, you know, the ability to make yourself a uh, healthy food. It's whether you can deal with yourself in those moments, right, to get yourself to do it. And the biggest thing that I hear from women uh, of our age um, is that there's this kind of split where you kind of know in your mind that you're really good at what you do and that people love you and that you, you know, like you're a good person. Um, and you have all these accomplishments to point to, you know, it in your mind, but you don't feel it in your bones, right? There's that right. split between kind of knowing it intellectually, but feeling it emotionally. Right. And that's the biggest thing that I hear from, um, women, which is why you can kind of make plans and you know what you should be doing. But when it comes to the heat of the moment, right, you can get hijacked. You can get hijacked by a voice that says, 
you know, whatever, right? You know, who are you? Or who do you um, think you are? Yeah. yeah. Or, and, and what happens when you get hijacked or when you're doing one of those kind of patterns where it's about, you know, all about managing other people's perceptions, what happens is that you get caught in kind of the heat of the moment. And in the heat of the moment, it's, it's about what I call like your small game. Because your small game is about your momentary concerns, your anxiety in the moment about like, you know, maybe somebody said something that maybe you felt dismissed or you felt left out or it made you self-conscious about how you look, you know, just in the moment. Uh, or, you you know, you, you questioned, um, you know, whether, t- uh, t- you know, people liked you or loved you. There's just something like that might just come up in the moment, you know, um, or maybe you just feel a little overwhelmed. And so you didn't, you didn't feel up to the task. And so, you know, you're, you're a little insecure about yourself. And so that's what I call your small game. Your small game is about your momentary concerns about what other people think or how you're feeling in you. And, and, and that's, you know, sort of when you get hijacked and, and what you want is you really want to focus your life on kind of your big game, what you're really here for, the contribution you're here to make, who you want to be in the world, the legacy you want to leave, how you want to show up for other people, the things that are really important, right? That's your big game. And, uh, that's what you want to, and we can go over, you know, some strategies, uh, for how to do that. But that's really when, when you can make decisions in the moment, always in the service of your big game, that's when you're able to live the life and, you know, kind of have the health outcomes and look the way that you want to look. That's profound, really profound, small game, big game. And I think it's really easy. As you were talking, I was thinking just yesterday, I had something happen that was just totally insignificant, but I made it significant. It was just an off the cuff comment in passing someone made to me who it came clear to me that her opinion of me was really important after I kept thinking about it the rest of the day. Why did that little insignificant comment in passing matter so much? You know, I went to that small game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we, we all do. Uh, so this is uh, very common and how very insightful uh, of you to notice that. And, you know, usually what I find uh, in those kind of situations is that it's there's sort of a part of you or a part, you know, of us uh, that gets activated in those moments. It's mm-hmm. usually a part of us that it's, you know, been around uh, for a while that continues to get hijacked uh, kind of in those moments. And it kind it's of six o'clock. It, it takes over, if you will. You know, it takes over. And um, and then, you know, there you are, you know, in your mind that you want to be playing your big game. Right. Um, but you you just uh, kind of get taken away. And, and what could be really uh, helpful to, to get out of being derailed in those situations is to really uh, two things. One is to kind of require yourself to be objective. What I find is that, you know, in these moments where our confidence gets derailed is that we become kind of subjective. It becomes about our, you know, just like you did, like your opinion of you or your concerns about what she thought. And if you had been able to require yourself to kind of, let's say, tell three alternative stories about the situation, right? Mm -hmm. You're right. We could go through it now if you want, or we could just, you know, sort of say at a high level, you know, that you probably would have been able to see that, oh, you know, whatever it was, like, this might have been about her limitations. Maybe it wasn't even about you at all. Or, you know, maybe she was just, you you know, questioning you because she was just trying to understand more. Or maybe, you know, like, maybe it wasn't uh, that um, that kindling inside of you of your own, you know, you know, know, thing about yourself. Maybe it wasn't really uh, about that. Yeah, no, I suspect that that is exactly right. It was just a a very small comment, but I think it kind of hit me at a, just an inopportune time when there was already this, well, here in the perfect instance of when probably this happens to many of you listeners, you know, I was tired. I was a little cranky. (laughs) 
<laughs> I was a little hangry. And oh, I could do hangry. Uh-huh. So that was not my best person there in that moment. And and then I let it ride. That's the part that bothers me most, I think, is, okay, not the moment. That doesn't really matter. But why am I still thinking about it 24 hours later? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when that happens, um, there's a reason uh, for that, right? So um, usually uh, when we kind of uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I can do this sort of like obsessing thing. You know what I mean? Like we were just keep going on something. And, um, and when it stays with us, it's usually because of some story that we're telling about the situation. So it's sort of like, not about just like you're saying what it actually was, but what we made it mean. Yeah. So that's where I'm saying. It's like one thing that you could do is, is to shift from self-critical to critical thinker. Mm, shift from self-critical to critical thinker. And that's where I'm saying where you could shift from what I'm just using word subjective, which was like all about like, you know, this is what she was thinking about me. And, you know, we get into this whole like, you know, it's all about uh, me. And we can um, instead uh, really require ourselves to be objective. Like what was really going on uh, in that situation? If I really got to know, you know, kind of her or the actual situation. And there's a really, really helpful strategy uh, that you can use in that situation, which uh, is is about helping you to be intentional and showing up as see, you even just said it right then and there. You said like you weren't really showing up as kind of who you wanted to be or your best self in the moment. Mm-hmm. Right. So let's uh, let's go over a strategy to help you and uh, your listeners to show up as your best self in the heat of the moment. Definitely. So, you know, there's so many things that we can't control and uh, things, you know, like what this other person said that can kind of uh, derail us. And so uh, one thing that you always uh, want to practice is is that when you focus on uh, things that you can't control, it actually activates a stress reaction. So uh, we only feel stress when there's aspects that sort of feel out of our control. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to do in any situation is that you want to sort out what are the aspects of the situation that I can control. And I call this your 50%. And distinguish that from the aspects of the situation that you can't control. That's kind of the other 50%. And it's it's almost like if you there was like a circle and you put a line through the middle of it, like, you know, one half of it is like your 50% and then the other half is like the other 50%, what you can't control. Mm-hmm. Anytime that you focus your attention on matters that you can't control, you will activate a stress reaction. I mean that like, like literally in your body. And then all the things that you talk about, Deborah, you know what I mean, in terms of what happens when your body is under stress and, and how it affects you, you know, gaining weight and your eating patterns and stuff will be kicked into action. Let's just Let's store that, that fat for later in case we need it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's a perfect uh, setup for that. And so what you want to do really is that you want to focus your attention on what you can control. And so even in that situation, like there you were with this other person, is there's so much that we actually can control that we kind of overlook or forget to exercise in the heat of the moment. So for example, you could uh, control your thoughts and your emotional reactions and your communications and, uh, you know, your uh, interpersonal, um, uh, you know, kind of interaction with her and your story about the situation. I mean, there's many, many, many things that you can control. And so as not to overwhelm uh, us, we're already up to here. I've kind of boiled it down as to there's really only one thing that you want to remember in any of these situations in order to not get stressed out. And that I call that the 50% rule. And the 50% rule is be impeccable for your 50%. Be impeccable for your 50%. So take 100% responsibility for the things that you can control before you ever, and be really effective at those things before you ever allow yourself to, you know, kind of blame and be resentful. I'm sure you were like talking to her in your mind and you're telling her that she shouldn't say that to you. (laughs) And you were doing all kinds of things. So stop talking to her in your mind and talk to yourself, right? Talk to yourself. 
And so be impeccable for your so condition. much harder, Sharon, so much harder. It's, uh, it's actually easier. Yes. It? Yeah. Harder to get yourself to do it. But you know what you could have done is you could have done, if you were pissed off at her cause she was dismissive or rude or something in some way, then instead of getting her to like, you know, apologize or be different or, you know, not have the limitations that she has, which is, I'm sure what was being reflected there. Right. Um, dismissive is such a good word. Yeah. <laughs> So instead of being that way, you could have done um, cooling breath, cooling Mm. breath, for example. So cooling breath is a reverse breath in which you're going to open your mouth ever so slightly. You're going to breathe in as if you're sipping through a straw. (sighs) Breathe in through your mouth, creating a wind tunnel over the top of your tongue like that. You know I'm in Boulder. We know that one really well. Oh, you know that one well. Okay, great. And um, breathe out through your nose, long, slow, deep breath, right? And so everyone, try it along with me now. Breathe in through your mouth as if you're sipping through a straw. And uh, breathe out through your nose, long, slow, deep breath. Now, do you feel a cooling and a drying sensation over the top of your tongue when you're doing that? Totally, yes. Okay, perfect. So that literally, like, so when you're, like, you know, frustrated or impatient or aggravated with someone else, you know, you get, like, oh, like hot under the collar, you know, you get, like, uh, flush like that. So... Instead of um, trying to get them to change or not have the limitations they have, instead, be impeccable for your 50%. Calm yourself down, right? Take yourself, which this breath does, out of the part of your brain that's in hijack and puts it back into the part of your brain that uh, helps you to be who you want to be and keeps you poised and gives you that moment to think about, you know, I want to make a long-term relationship with this person. So how do I need to show up? Right. And be the first one, be impeccable for your 50% and be the first one to shift the energy, uh, in the situation. That's an example of like, stop talking to her in your mind, calm yourself down. And actually there's a secret ninja weapon aspect to cooling breath, which is that not only will it calm you down, it will calm the other person down. So if you're in like a little tense situation with someone, uh, it just diffuses the whole thing. Uh, and yes, this works with your children. <laughs> That's exactly where I was going. It absolutely just diffuses the situation. Teach it to them as well. It's a good self-regulation uh, technique for them. Wow. But it's probably not appropriate to approach people in public and tell them to do this so that they can deal with their children. <laughs> You will be very tempted, but all that you do is you just go up near that family that is, because again, you know, that mother is doing that because she, she's sort of trying the best that she can, but something mm-hmm. inside of her is getting triggered, right? Right. And that's a good example of one of those patterns because she's needing mm-hmm. her kids to behave because she's feeling ashamed and that it's a bad reflection on her, which is why she's getting very controlling with her kids right? It's all that same kind of dynamic, right? She's worried about what other people are thinking. So if we can get her to get back out of, you know, out of hijack and into the part of her brain where she can remember who she wants to be as a parent, that she wants to see her children for who they are, be empathic to their needs, right? That will totally shift the whole situation. So just go over, sidle over to them, do cooling breath and just kind of diffuse energetically the situation. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's powerful. That makes me kind of come back to, okay, so we just did the analogy of maybe a a young mother, a younger mother, although it's not uncommon for some of us in our audience to have kindergartners. Totally understand that. Today's life is an American life. But I also see it as, you know, like our habits, the habits we want or the exercise or the nutrition we can really try to over control those too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you know what I think would be helpful um, is uh, is this this is a, a strategy that I think will be very uh, effective for anyone who really wants to make a change uh, in their lives, um, which is that. Um, that you you want to try to get out of the that small game moment we were talking about because that's usually stress induced and it's kind of automatic you know you go to that place of the crunch 
And what you want in those situations is to be more intentional, right? Like who you want to show up as uh, in in terms of your fitness and and uh, your eating. And and so I uh, I call this idea of kind of who you want to show up as. I call this idea your horizon point, your horizon point. And the horizon point, it's sort of like a visual, like you could literally picture, you know what I mean? Like an, a kind of an anchor or focal point. And your horizon point is like, who do you want to be? Who do you want to show up as? Or who do, what are the qualities and the attributes of who you need to be in order to have the outcomes that you want, Right. Right. So, um, I would really encourage, uh, your listeners. And I actually have an exercise uh, around this where, um, I will take you through and helping you to identify who you want to be at your horizon point and then get you started with some strategies to start being able to be that person in the heat of the moment. But I'll just give you like uh, two examples here, uh, of this. So, awesome. Here, here's like, um, so, uh, here's a woman I, I know that your, uh, listeners are probably, you know, quite talented and, um, c- you know, contributing at high levels in their, uh, organizations, let's just say. And so here's a woman who I coached who was pretty senior in an organization and they were going through tons of change, like as all organizations are. And so at her horizon point, you know, we talked about, so who do you want to be? And she said, well, I want to be someone who's not reactive to the change. I want to be like above the fray. I want to be the person who, you know, like other people come to, to help them to deal with changes in the organization. You know, she was like the head of supply chain. It was a fashion company and everyone was like freaking out, you know, drama queen fashion company, like, you know, (laughs) supply chain, everything was changing. So she had this whole like build out, which this, uh, this, um, audio training will, will show you how to do and, um, you know, who she wants to be. And then, because it's going to be hard to remember like what you write, you know, out a one page thing on a piece of paper in a, in a week or a month from now. And in the heat of the moment, we came up with like a phrase that just captured who she want to be. So for her, it was poised change agent, poised Hmm. change agent. And so that gave her her purpose that enabled her to be intentional. And, and like she was a filter as she went throughout her day. And my being that poised change agent, you know, what would it look like? You know, can I do cooling breath? Can I, you know, use this strategy? What, you know, can I do here? And so she was someone who for two years had been, you know, sort of battling with her senior management, like trying to advance and sort of get to that highest rung. And she was, you know, frustrated and it wasn't happening. And um, so, you know, we started to work together. She articulated this horizon point. And within eight weeks of really consistently showing up in this way, in the crunch of the moment, you know, sort of being, no, I want to be that poised change agent and showing up in that way. And then the CEO of her company said, you know something, you're like a role model for this and put her as, you know, sort of a leader over the whole company, like overseeing this whole change. She became like the uh, person uh, at that level. So It's an example of how powerful it could be to shift yourself out of the crunch of the moment and show up intentional. I'll give you another example of this because I think your uh, listeners might appreciate this. This is a woman who was uh, in business for herself and she was very self-critical and kind of hard charging and really worked from early morning to late at night and kind of wearing down those adrenals, you know, and she had a quick trigger, you know, she would sort of react if her people, you know, gave her something that made a mistake and stuff. So we started to work together. And, um, so we did her horizon point. She was like, well, you know, I want to grow my company and, you know, and, but I want to have more balance. You know, I don't want to be so self-critical. I want to spend more time with my kids, you know, this kind of thing. And, um, so her horizon point was effortless flow. And so that became her purpose. You know, how could I do this with more effortlessness? Right. And, um, so, uh, and, and so, you know, she just started to, you know, strategize then, you know, we came up with ways where she could do this, where, uh, where where she could get the results, but without so much churn, you know, so she grew her business 30% in the first quarter. She spends two afternoons a week with her kids. She gets a massage every couple of days, you know, effortless flow that became her intention. So, if you want to uh, figure out like what's your horizon point and oh, I love that. some strategies to get started, let me let me just give you the URL for that. Yes. 
uh, which is just, you know, it's my website, which is uh, Sharon Melnick.com, S H A R O N Melnick, M E L N I C K, Sharon Melnick.com forward slash Horizon Point, Horizon Point, Sharon Melnick.com forward slash Horizon Point, and just download uh, that audio, and I literally will walk you through, you know, how do you figure out what is it for you? And how can you be sort of inspired and take yourself out of the crunch of that moment and be like, who do I want to show up as? And you can use this if you're in uh, the moment and you're like, I don't feel like going to the gym, you know, or I feel like eating, you know, my friends are uh, eating this chocolate or my office party is eating that candy. You know what I mean? And like, I feel like doing that too. And then you just think, who do I want to be at my horizon point? And I love this. You out of the small game of the moment and put you into this is who I want to be. That's my big game. I want to feel like this level of energy. And this is who I want to show up for for my kids and grandkids. And this is the legacy that I want to leave, which is what's really important for my life, not this piece of chocolate cake. I love it. I love this. So sweet, sweet exercise without getting breathless and without lifting a finger. You can do this one. So definitely everybody listening, if you're walking, keep walking. If you're lifting, keep lifting. It will be in the show notes. So you can get that SharonMillick.com forward slash horizon point link. And is that the best place for listeners to connect with you and get more Sharon? Absolutely. SharonMelnick.com. I'd be thrilled to hear from you and see how I could support you. Awesome. Okay. So hardest question of the day. I ask everyone, you're super smart, so I know you're going to get this one right, but is there a question you wish I would have asked you? Um, well, you know, one thing uh, that I, I wasn't really intending on saying this, but I, I think it will help to close a loop here which is that um, that idea of when you know in your mind that you're worthy and, and you should feel good about your accomplishments and all that, but you don't feel it in your bones, right? There's that split that we were talking about. And uh, so um, I just want people to know that if, if you – face that, because that's really common for talented and smart women, you know, is that there is a fix for this. And uh, I actually um, uh, do this with clients. We call this the magic bullet exercise, the magic bullet exercise. And um, what you can do, it's actually quite simple and uh, graceful. And we just trace that kind of negative voice back to its origin. We root it out at its source. And uh, you just, you just don't go there anymore. You, you just don't go there in the same way. And uh, it just frees you from all the ways that you might've been kind of keeping yourself, um, uh, holding yourself back or putting a lot of that energy into managing other people's perceptions. So I just wanted you to know that there, um, there, there absolutely is a, is a very, um, kind of easy fix, a graceful, uh, fix. And it just, um, it just, uh, it just frees you. And, um, so just, you know, you can be in touch with me through my website about that. If you want to talk about the magic bullet, uh, conversation and actually what's such a great tie with, uh, what it is that you do, Deborah, is, um, that I actually uh, did this with a client of mine who, uh, was feeling self-conscious uh, about her weight and, uh, that there was just, uh, this part of her, um, that, uh, would get hijacked, you know, in those, uh, moments, of uh, feeling um, concerned about what other people would think about her. And when we were really able to kind of trace that back to its origin and she was able to root that out, she uh, actually um, lost about, uh, I, think it was, I think it was like seven pounds or so uh, over the course of um, uh, two or three weeks. And she said she just, she just started eating healthy. Like she just wasn't tempted uh, in the same way because it was coming from a place uh, that was uh, deeper within. So I, I just wanted to uh, offer that to uh, your tribe of people. If, if that's something that kind of resonates for you, then, then just uh, be in touch that you don't necessarily have to live uh, with that. Um, I love that. Yeah. But, and I'm sure that resonates with so many of our listeners. And uh, the, the question that you wanted to, uh, to um, me to ask of you is, is really the one that I want to ask of you, which is that, <laughs> you know, how, how do I uh, stop, 
you know, forcing myself to work out for, you know, at my hardest for 45 minutes. So uh, I, I'm going to be going and, you know, re-listening to some of the things that you've been telling me to do. And uh, this time I'm going to commit to absolutely doing them. So we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be hiring you and uh, you're going to be teaching me this. So we're, as soon as we get off the line, we're going to nail that one down. We're going to be flipping fast friends coming up and listeners, If you have a question that I didn't ask or that Sharon didn't answer, leave it below the show link at flipping50.com, all words, all spelled out, no spaces. And join us on the Facebook fan page at Flipping 50 TV. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating in iTunes. It really helps. And then share this with a friend so you can surround yourself with a supportive community of women who are on the same journey. What are you waiting for? Start Flipping 50 today.